remember during these notes, it's going to be short, it's going to be sweet. When I get to a slide where it might have a lot of writing, I'd like you to pause it, get down what you're supposed to write. That way you can just start play and you can listen to the little 30, 40 minute or 40 second, I'm sorry, snippet about what I'm saying and then you can go on. But remember, I'm going to be holding you not only responsible for having these in class, but also responsible for knowing what I'm saying during these little videos. So make sure you are on board. So get your notes out and let's go ahead and start World War II from the start. So the first thing I want you to take a look at is it's World War II. I need you to get down these two dates. Um, 1939 is the year that technically it's going to start. It will end in 1945. It is kind of like World War I in the fact that we did not enter in the very beginning. We won't enter until 1941. So you've got to know that the dates for World War II are technically 39 to 45, but U.S. doesn't enter until 1941. And I would bet a whole lot of money you can already tell me what happened in 1941 that will bring us into the war. Anybody know what woke us up? The Japanese bombed us at where? Pearl Harbor. So before we start this, let's go ahead and review since World War I. Okay, so World War I, 1914 to 1918. But the U.S. didn't enter until 19 what? 17. Because what did Germany do to bring us into the war? Do you remember those three things? Unrestricted submarine warfare, Lusitania merchant ships, and they sent a little bit of a telegram to Mexico. Remember the name of the telegram? Zimmerman telegram. Very good job. And so with that, okay, we are going to see the U.S. enter World War One. We will end World War One. The Treaty of what ends World War One? Did you say the Treaty of Versailles? Not Versailles. The Versailles. And then, of course, with that, we punish Germany. The League of Nations is built. But, of course, the League of Nations for the United States is never entered. And then we are basically in a post-war economy. Now, fast forward to 1920s. That entire decade, what's it about? What's the 1920s about? It's about a party, yes. It's about sports. It's about a party. It's about spending money, but spending money on credits, which leads to what's the 1930s? The Roaring Twenties might be roaring in the Jazz Age, but the 1930s, some people call it, mm, this would be a good question, the Dirty Thirties, because everybody's dirty. They don't have a job. They don't have a house. It's the Great Depression. Now, Great Depression, Herbert Hoover, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, I have a new deal. FDR takes us all the way through the Great Depression, but what really ends the Great Depression? Is it the new deal? Is it all of the programs, the alphabet agencies? Is it all the spending? Or is it World War II? Now, here's the causes of World War II, okay? The causes of World War II, the first thing I need you to get down. Germany was blamed for the war. It lost all its colonies in the Treaty of Versailles. I really didn't talk about the territory, okay, of World War II. So make sure you circle that right there. Lost colonies, which means lost land. You think Germany's going to be okay with losing its colonies? I don't think it's going to. It was crushed down in the blame for the war. It lost its land. It was told it can't have a military. Literally, it had to pay everybody else's war reparations, according to the Treaty of Versailles, a crushing $33 billion. So Germany basically gets shoved into the ground with the um, Treaty of Versailles, and it basically starts World War II. Now, one thing I will tell you, just going back to this real quick, the ironic thing about World War I, it was called the War II end all wars. Yes. The funny thing is, is the end of World War I kind of causes World War II. Now, the other thing that we got here, the causes of World War II, the Great Depression. Well, you and I have been talking about the Great Depression in an economic American sense, right? But guess what? Tariffs wars are international. Did the entire country have an economic depression? Bam. Worldwide economic devastation. People have been buying on credit. Tariff wars were happening. Remember my two tariffs? And if you don't think I'm going to ask about those tariffs, you're wrong. Of course, 60% right out here is what you want to make sure you know. But everybody and their dog is completely unemployed during the 1930s. They are hungry. They are needing hope. And in America, who did we turn to for that hope? Who was our president that was going to take us out of the Great Depression? The only thing you have to fear is fear itself. We had FDR. We had fireside chats. But who did Germany have? Oh, crap. They had Hitler. Who did Italy have? Mussolini. Who did Russia have? Stalin. So we got a pretty good leader, although some people will say it was a little power hungry. But you got to think about the fact if this economic depression is worldwide or you think that people are going to turn to other people, and sometimes those people are going to be bad people. Rise of foreign, uh-oh, here's the word. Dum-dum-dum dictatorships. 
Here's the deal. Social desperation and unrest leads to basically people looking for a leader to get them out. A promise of dictatorships to change problems is going to give Hitler the chance to rise up to power, Mussolini. And here's the other thing. It also creates this need for people to blame someone, which Hitler is going to say blame a certain group and then we'll kill them all. Who's he going to blame? The Jews. But you have to think one of the causes of World War II is the economic depression, which leads to the rise of foreign dictatorships pretty big problem here. Now, problems after World War I, I don't know if you've got this slide, but if you do, I want you to get it down, okay? Problems after World War I, the Great Depression, economic, people were jobless. If I'm jobless, do I care who's giving me a job as long as I'm getting paid? No, okay? Then, political, weak governments could not solve problems in their own countries. And here's the other thing, sometimes it's a really good ploy to say, hey, your life sucks right now, you should blame and then insert someone here. Of course, Hitler said blame the Jews and the communists. And then, of course, in political times of uh, Great Depression, people want a leader. The long and short of it is, and you want to know what I might ask you in class, if you are scared, hungry, and jobless, do you care who is going to help you out? No. If you're starving and Hitler is front of, in front of you with a foot-long Subway sandwich. And I'm not talking like, oh man, I'm hangry, I'm hungry. I mean, you are starving on your deathbed. If there was literally the devil in front of you, Hitler himself, would you take the Subway sandwich? I would, probably. I hate to say it, I would. And I'd, I mean, I'd probably do whatever I need to get that sandwich or get my kids that sandwich, yes? Wear a swastika? Back then, people said, okay. Now, the definition of a totalitarian dictator, okay? Power of the government rests in, circle, one man. Total power. Total power? What's the root word of totalitarian? Total, yes. No freedoms in this society. Usually racist, discriminatory to a certain group. Who are you thinking about right now with Hitler? Jews, okay? Then often have large militaries and can conquer, um, need to conquer land to gain approval from their people. Think about Hitler. He was racist. He had a large military, started building it up, and he wanted land. There is World War II. Now, let's talk about these three totalitarian dictators, okay? Came to power in the 1920s and the 1930s. One reason why they could come to power in the 1930s, think about it. America's worried about where we're getting our next meal and what, you know, breadline is opening or what else is going on, right? And so we're worried about ourselves. In the 1920s, we're partying. In the 1930s, we're worried about ourselves. So these dictators came to be. Adolf Hitler, of course, you know who that is. Benito Mussolini, right here, Italian. And Joseph Stalin, Russia. Here's the big thing. Totalitarian dictators have total power. Total, total power. And with that, a lot of the times there's going to be bad things that come with that. Now, let's talk about Stalin first. So go ahead and pause this. Get it down. Pause. Let's talk about this. Joseph Stalin, 1921 is the date that he takes over the Soviet Union and puts it under a communist rule. The Union of Soviet or Socialist Republics, or the USSR is what we will call it. The government controls all of the territories, okay? There's a massive um, effort to industrialize the Soviet Union. You need to make sure you understand that. But, of course, one thing I will tell you is it might have industrialized, but it industrialized under the government's power. Um, no opposition is tolerated in a communist dictatorship. Stalin is unbelievably ruthless. He maneuvered himself into becoming the leader. The Russian Revolution was led by the people, but here's the deal. He's who took over. Now with that, remember the Russian Revolution caused the Red Scare in America during the 1920s. This is who the Red Scare is about. Stalin. Red equals what? communism. And with that, of course, he doesn't give a Bill of Rights to anybody but himself, I'll be honest. Communism and fascism are very similar, but communism very much spreads. In fact, this, look at this right here. I love this poster. A red octopus with its tentacles around the world. Yes, that's one of the propaganda booklets that was sold in the 1920s and 30s trying to explain communism to the American public. Joseph Stalin, communist, Make sure you know that. The Bolshevik Revolution leads to him. Now, let's go with the next one. He lets you get... The, oh, so sorry. Oh, Hitler. Nope. Okay. Benito who? Mussolini. So pause, get this down. Let's talk about him. Okay. Totalitarian dictator. Benito Mussolini, 1922. Italy. 
fascist is his government, okay? His idea is believe, obey, fight. He wants to revive the Roman Empire. Well, he's Italian. Why not? Condemned democracy, socialism, and communism. Basically anybody that wasn't him. Defended capitalism, but he says that capitalism needs to be regulated by the government. Which is ironic, because that's kind of what we as Americans believe. He did get very, very upset because there was a slow economic recovery and he blamed the world economics conditions on everyone else and said, I will return us to the glory of the Roman Empire days. Here's the basic thing with Medito Mussolini. You just need to know he's from Italy. You need to know that he is a Hitler-like, like, I will say, dictator. He is fascist where basically the symbol um, is going to be for his fascist country, the old Roman Empire. It's a philosophy or system of government that advocates or exercises a dictatorship though. Make sure you understand that. State of control of industry. There you go. Socialism. Racial superiority. Mm, that's not going to work out well with the democracy people like ourselves. Supremacy of leader. He likes himself. Shocker. Limit civil rights. There it is. That's the one that's important. And together with belligerent nationalism, militarism, and expansion. So basically, is there that much difference between fascism and communism and Hitlerism? Not really. Next up, rise of Adolf Hitler. You guys don't have this slide, but I just like you to check out the evolution of the stash. Big stash. This is when he was. He was born in Austria. But here he is dressed as a military person because he was a veteran of World War one. Now think about this. Hitler's a veteran of World War One. He sees the Treaty of Versailles and how bad Germany was taken advantage of and pretty much blamed and put into the ground and he gets mad. He comes back 10 years later. Here's the Nazi party. World War II happens. But I'm telling you right now, the evolution of the staff is, stash is pretty interesting. Now, here's the information on Hitler. Why don't you get it down, pause it, and let's talk about it. Okay. So totalitarian dictator, Adolf Hitler, Germany, 1933 is technically when he takes over. Okay, so he's actually one of the last totalitarian dictators, and he will technically be a fascist regime. But with that, I'm going to be honest with you, his regime, it's not, I mean, it is fascism. It's Nazism, okay? And we know that name. He is absolutely saying that there is a master Aryan race, and he is the leader of it. Even though he's not blonde, he's not blue-eyed, and his mother was a Jew. Whoops. But he convinces people that the Jews are to blame. He was a World War I veteran, blamed Jews for World War I's loss and the economic downturn and how come Germany was so far behind. He was arrested for attempting to overthrow the Nazi regime. It was actually called the Beer Hall Pooch. He, in prison, actually, he writes this book. Ooh, I'm going to need you to know that. In fact, this would be an awesome quiz question. He writes this book called Mein Kampf. Say it like a German. Mein Kampf. It technically translates, and he writes it in prison. This is going to make sense to my struggle. You need to know what this book was about. It is a book detailing the political ideas for Germany and his future plans to return Germany to that pre-World War I status. He says, I'm going to rebuild the military. I'm going to take control of Germany. I'm going to get our land back, and we're going to dominate this world. And then think about what he did. Pretty much that. It's just, you know, we got in his way. So here is the background of Hitler. Make sure you know about it. Some of the interesting things about Hitler. Um, he actually, uh, here's a good question, thing that you should know. Um, he wanted to be an artist. Um, he applied like three times for the Vienna. He was born in Austria, you know. The Vienna Art School, they rejected him three times. You know which one of the things I love to think about? Some of the what ifs of history. What if Hitler had been accepted to that art school? How would the world be different? Well, we know a large number of Jews would still be alive. Let's talk about something I really don't like talking about, the Holocaust. Against a race, anti-Semitism. Are we clear? This is where we're going with this.